Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently returning home from our orbital mission of the moon and we are going to start this burn in about 12 minutes. Of course we've gotten a lot of science here and we managed to do a rendezvous at the same time so we managed to complete our contract here. We just need to return to Corbin. Corbin? Apparently we need to return to Corbin from the orbit of the moon. I don't know where Corbin is. I'm going to assume that that's just Kerbin. <laughs> it, it doesn't say Corbin. It says Kerbin. Okay, so we're going to align here a little bit, and let's warp for about 12 minutes. Fantastic. We just need to get into position for our burn here. We are going there, and so we go this direction. It makes sense. Trust me. <laughs> it's because our path gets warped by the gravity of the moon, obviously. So we're going to commence our burn here in about 40 seconds. We're going to be fine-tuning this with a radial retrograde burn on the way in for sure. So we're not that concerned about it being just like tremendously accurate. So we'll commence this burn now. And we're just going to burn prograde here. That'll be absolutely fine. We'll grab any additional... Actually, I don't think we can grab any additional science. I think we have what we can get for this run. There was some science we could have gotten earlier on, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm just cutting the throttle here, and we're just going to get this last little bit here. If I can... Oh, hello. Overshot it. We're going to need to correct that. I was hitting the wrong button instead of turning. Fantastic. So we're going to get into position here and just get that last little corrective burn in there. There, that'll do. So what is our our flight trajectory looking like? Periapsis of 38 kilometers. That looks really good. Okay, so somewhere around here-ish. I wish we knew what altitude this was going to be, but somewhere around here we're going to want to do a retrograde burn and bring this right on down, but we're going to want to toss in some radial as well. Never mind, actually. I think we're going to want to wait until the periapsis here. We just have 421 meters per second left here. I think we just want to bring this on down as much as we can at the periapsis. So we just burn out all of our fuel here as a re-entry burn. And we may end up having to do two aerobrake passes. I'm not sure what that speed is going to end up looking like. But we can do something kind of like that. And yes, we don't quite have the fuel for this, but let's go ahead and warp on over here. We're heading back into the sphere of influence of Kerbin right now. There we go. I'm not sure where the moon is. There it goes. Goodbye, moon. Hello, Kerbin. And we are in the atmosphere already. Wow, that was fast. Okay. So we're just going to park on retrograde here. There we go. And we're going to commence this burn pretty shortly here. We're moving pretty quickly. And we definitely want to slow this on down. So I want to burn off all of this remaining fuel. And we are timed to periapsis of about a minute here still. So our thrust to weight is going to be a little lower than normal because we are, of course, in Atmo. We do see a thermometer here, though, so I'm going to burn it here. Because we need to slow down. We don't want to risk having our engine explode on us. So there we go. We're going to burn off all of our fuel here. That puts our periapsis at 36 kilometers. Okay, I don't think we're actually leaving the atmosphere here. I don't think we're going to have a second air brake pass. Especially if we burn all of that off and then separate like so. And the sheer amount of drag that these heat shields give us is slowing us down extraordinarily dramatically. You can see here we are already dropping our apoapsis by a tremendous amount. So that's great. We are in orbital retrograde, which seems completely fine. This is that material study that I would have liked to have grabbed on the way up. We have no way to grab it on the way down. It's just not an, op an, an option to grab it on the way down. That should have been an on the way up thing. There we go. Our periapsis is about to... Our apoapsis just dropped into the atmosphere. Our periapsis is now negative. And we're cruising at still about orbital velocity. There's a lot of air between us and the ground still, so we've got lots of time to slow down. 2.1 kilometers per second right now, and still holding attitude. 
Oh, we just dropped down to 1.8. Uh, I think that's because we switched to surface from orbital. That's fine. Surface mode is more accurate here anyway. So 1.7 kilometers per second. We're going at a really good speed here. This is fine. No problems whatsoever. We're going to recover this very, very easily. 1.6 kilometers per second. I would physics warp, but I'm a little concerned. I, I feel like it would it would be like 95% fine. The only way we would have a problem physics warping here is with a Kraken. But I don't want to risk it. So we'll hold off on that. We're going at about 1.3 kilometers per second now. We're 26 kilometers up. No problems here. This is a textbook re-entry. It would have been a little spicy, I think, without that re-entry burn, but... Even then, it would have been fine if we if we were just using the heat shield. It would have been spicy if we had tried to save the the burn until when it was slightly more efficient. I think we made the right call there. Let's drop the drogue shoots. We're now at 700 meters per second and slowing dramatically. SAS can now be turned off. The main shoot is not available yet. Now it is. So the main shoot has been utilized. And we don't want to press space again. Cool. So I'm going to, at this point, begin physics warping. And we're going to bring this on down. We've got this nice sunrise happening. But, of course, the sun is going to disappear below the horizon as we fall. No shockers there. It's not quite sunrise. Not quite. Or sunset. One of those. <laughs> Two kilometers up, our drogue shoots deploy. And then our main shoot will deploy. And the question is just how much science is this going to net us? It's going to be a lot. No doubt about that. Also, high physics warp effects. <laughs> yeah, physics warp can be spicy sometimes. No doubt about that. It's connected, but things get wacky with physics warp occasionally. So we'll bring this on down. 200 meters to go. And about 8 meters per second. It should be fine for splashdown. 3, 2, 1. And splashdown. Fantastic. We could grab our mystery goo observation and material study here, in theory. But I think we're probably better off keeping the ones that we have. We can always get splashdowns later, in theory. That's not going to be a big deal. So we'll recover this. And how much science do we get out of it, is the question. Hopefully at least two to three hundred. But we'll see. It's going to be at least that, right? It's going to be a lot. Any moment now, KSP. You can do it. Okay, 529. Excellent. That's what I wanted to see. Cool. So we did get some money, of course. We have almost a million right now. And we can come in here and grab Explore the Moon. So this is attempting a landing on the moon. I mean, that's definitely something we want to grab. We're not going to go after that immediately because we probably are going to have some viewer contracts to combine with that. And I, I actually need to check the viewer contracts here real quick. Let me open that up. Okay, uh, yeah. Currently, none of these are about landing on the moon, so we're not going to pursue that right now. We do need to go into some R&D here and clean some of this up. So heavy rocketry would be not the most important thing to get right now. A lot of this is not tremendously important. Ladders would be nice, and rove max. We do, I believe, need to have a rover onto the moon. Yeah, SpaceMax wants you to send a probe and rover with an antenna onto the moon to collect a sample and return the same probe to become the Earth's satellite. Okay. So that requires a rover and a probe. And then return the probe. So the probe would, like, drop off the rover onto the moon. So that would, of course, mean that we would want these RoveMax wheels. Definitely. That also gives us the experiment control station, which would be important for a manned landing. That would also largely mean that we probably want things like the LT-1 landing strut. So we'll take that. 
The Guabiti monitor would again be important for an actual moon landing, a manned one. This first one would be potentially unmanned. MechJep features Maneuver and, trans and Translatron, sure. Um, the RCS thruster blocks, the Pomegranate Reentry module would not be a bad thing to have. We could definitely grab that, and we can't afford to grab all of the rest of these. I think that what we go for is the fairings here. Yeah, 1.25 meter fairing would be very good to have. We'll grab that, and then I think we'll grab just propulsion systems for now. That'll give us access to the ant. Do we have access to the twitch already? We have access to the thud. Okay, spider and twitch are up here, so we're not going to have that just yet. But at least having access to the ant wouldn't be a bad thing. So we'll research that. Cool. And then these we can't quite afford. Okay. So, let's check in on our exploration mission here. So this is just land on the moon. Nothing else. So my understanding of what Ghost123's contract here would be is something along the lines, and let me switch over to display capture here, something along the lines of this. So we need to send a probe and a rover. The question is, probes in my mind are usually orbital. And a rover, of course, lands and rolls around. So we'd need to land the rover, probably detached from the probe. And then the probe would do some, some science in orbit to collect a sample and return the same probe. So the rover would collect a sample. Maybe they're both... Is this supposed to be a sample return mission? Maybe that makes the most sense. And I don't think we got the advance payment either when we accepted this. Okay, so we should definitely get the advance, the advance payment. And I think that's a sample return mission, but we return this to be a satellite of Earth. Okay, so we can start designing that for sure. We can definitely start designing that. Let's hop into the VAB. Oh, uh, we should add in that 150k for the advance payment, because I forgot to do that. So this would go up, and then this would go to 7. Okay, this is going to be a bunch of clicking, a bunch of spamming here. I really wish there was a 10k. That'd be very nice. But we'll take that up to 7. Okay, there we go. So there's that advance payment in. We'll hop into the VAB. And I'm going to modify this off of our existing orbital science rocket. I think that's going to be a decent base to start with. So then we would take this decoupler, delete everything up here. This would be, and what was the name of this contract again? Uh, it doesn't actually, moon sample in return, yeah. So we'll call this the, uh, that was ghost 123s. So ghost 123s moon sample return. Okay, so that'll be fine. And as far as the probe and the... Okay, I'm just, I'm definitely like very lost in thought about how I want to structure this right now. So I think the way that we want to do this, we're going to need a pod and we don't have access to like the rove mate. So we'll need to like construct a rove mate. For the time being, what is our cheapest remote piloted? I mean, that would be the Stay Putnik. We're going to use the Octo, though. Is that lighter than the Stay Putnik? The, the Stay Putnik is lighter. So we'll use the Stay Putnik and the Octo. The Octo will be our base part here. Okay. So the Octo is going to need to be mounted like this. This would then be... Actually, the Stay Putnik should be the root part. Now that I think about it. And we'll put in a new Stay Putnik here. This needs to be the root part. This is going to be the brains of the sample return. So, we're going to need some amount of fuel on there. That probably doesn't need to be very much. Uh, Oscar A, Oscar B. Yeah, that's about the right size. So we put on like an Oscar C liquid fuel tank. And then we would power that. I'm assuming that this doesn't have anything... 
we we do need to have a battery on here for sure. We would need to have a reaction wheel on here. Uh, that's way too big of one. We need a small inline reaction wheel. So this would be the probe here. We would definitely want to have some sort of a sample return capsule, right? So at the very least, I mean, there's the experiment return unit here. A conical shape to better survive the rigors of atmospheric entry. I mean, sure, but we want to leave it in orbit. So like an experiment storage unit like this. And then this would be powered by some sort of a small engine, <laughs> like an ant. That's probably too small of an engine. Perhaps like a spark or a pug. Yeah, something like this. What would this thrust weight be on the moon? Really, really high and a lot of DV. So that seems relatively doable. Now this is going to need to have some power generation on it. So we put on a pair of photovoltaic panels like this. And then we would also put on a an, an antenna on here, for sure. Does this specify an antenna? The probe and rover must have a, high, a 5G high gain antenna and generate solar power and have a science unit. Okay, so we would put a high G antenna on here like this. And then back here, we would put a thermometer to have a science unit on here. You could argue that the experiment storage unit counts as that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put the thermometer. For one thing, it offsets the weight a little bit. Do, does the spark gimbal? It does. Okay, good to know. So this would be our probe. It's not a great probe, but it is a probe. So then we put a decoupler on here. And that would be not a TD25, like a TD18 is way too big. Are all of these going to be too big? Okay, a TSO6. There. Now, we're going to have a probe attached onto here. And what is that going to be made out of? What do we have for structural parts? Not a lot is the answer. We could use a structural tube here. We could put in like a modular girder segment here. I was hoping for a cubic octagonal strut, but we could do a modular girder segment and then duplicate that, put this into mirror mode and place it something like this. And that would be like the baseline of our, of what we're looking for here for our rover. Then we can duplicate it again and attach it like that. I don't know. I feel like that's too wide for our fairing. We may just want to go something like this. So we widen this like so. I'm going to do this number. Okay. So we widen it like this. That is for purposes of having a slightly wider base. And that would be the base of our rover here. So then we would put in rove maxes. Uh, what is the 20 meter per second impact tolerance? Okay. Um, that may or may not be real. We would rotate this to be something kind of like that. And then we would snap them into position, of course. I don't know about having them be facing this way. Well, I mean, I suppose they could be, but I think these are really the directionality that we'd want, right? Not necessarily. This might actually be fine. We could then also put in some of them here, like that. Alternatively, we could ditch these and just have these be out here like this so that they're on the outside. That may end up, no, don't duplicate that. That may end up being the best way to handle it. Okay, so we're going to snap them into position. Something like that. That looks good position-wise. I have no idea what the actual pivot of this is going to look like. But then we would use a separator here. So we need a TD-06, rather, yeah, TD-06 stack separator. We put that there. And then what do we have for adapters? I mean, that's way too big, I think. So if we were to just connect this in here, A, we don't need this decoupler. That can go away. 
B, what do we have for fuel tank adapters? It's the correct size on the top, but not the correct size on the bottom. Okay, what about this guy? No. This guy. No. <laughs> Trial and error. No. Is that all we have? It's spelled with an E. Okay. Uh, Rockamax brand adapter exists. There are some of these that, like, that would be the right size. It's not a fuel adapter. That's maybe okay. So we'd go for something kind of like this, but we would need to have a fairing. So I think what I'd do is I would drop this down and we would put in another fuel tank here. So like a T400, this is probably way too much fuel. We'll think about weight here in a moment. Um, this may be overpowering for this first stage here. So maybe what we would do is instead we would detach that place this here, and then put the fairing down here. That's a potential option. How wide does the fairing get? That is something we need to think about. So we would go for a 1.25 meter fairing, and that's all the wider it gets. Okay. We could avoid having a fairing. We could go for a ridiculous looking fairing. I mean, that kinda works. Kinda. I have a feeling that's a lot of weight. And it's definitely ridiculous looking. There's no doubt about that. We'd wanna redo these struts. And uh, they're kinda spicy. But something like this, that is a really dumb looking fairing. Do we just launch it fairingless? It's probably okay to be launched fairingless, to be honest. How much weight is this fairing? Uh, 8.148, and yeah, it's about a two-ton fairing. So, I mean, that does save us a lot of weight to do this. Now, we have some questions. If we're on Kerbin, what does our thrust to weight look like on this first stage here? 1.3, so that's slightly higher. This is slightly lighter than our last go. Of course, we do need something for the rover to be doing, and we need a control mechanism for the rover. So we need to, and we need to think about landing. So there's a lot that needs to happen here still. First things first, a Probodobodine Octo here. And I would like to have a small... SAS on this as well. So we need a small inline reaction wheel here. This is getting tall, no doubt about that, but this will be detached. Now we'd need a landing system for this. Now it's going to be interesting for sure. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to pull that one off. And we need a... We need an antenna on here. So an antenna would go somewhere around... I wanted to rotate it like that. Yeah, something like that would be the antenna. We need to have a science module here. We already have a thermometer on here, so I think we would go for something like a barometer. There we go. We need to be able to generate power. So we would put on some photovoltaic panels. I would do at least one here and one here. Okay. Something like that. And then something for the rover to do after the mission is over. Whatever you want with the rover, but must give it a purpose. Well, technically the HG5 high gain antenna is a relay antenna. We could consider this a communications relay. That feels a little cheap. What else do we want it to do? Hmm. That's an interesting question for sure. I mean, it could just be a barometer reader. That's definitely a thing. We don't have a lot of tech. I would often make it something like a miner or something, but I mean, we could just call it a relay or a, a communications relay. That, that would technically count for the contract. If I don't come up with any better ideas, I'll do that. It feels a little cheap. 
But that that would be the idea. If we don't come up with any better ideas. Now, landing. Landing is a question. So, we would do probably something like additional small stack separators here. So, I'd be looking for TSO6s. I would put in a pair of these. Hmm. We could do quad in theory, but I don't know how great of an idea that is. And then the idea would just simply be it's connected into like some small fuel tanks here. That would then detach after we finish the landing. We'd need to snap these into position to make sure that they were evenly spaced, right? So we would snap them in like so and like so. Although I don't necessarily love that positioning. So I would toggle the snap off for the moment and just place them about there and about there. As a hypothetical, obviously we'd be able to land this with uh, sparks. That would almost certainly be absolutely fine. So these sparks would fire when here? Here in stage two. I mean, yeah, that's fine for now. So stage two on the moon, this would be a thrust away to 14.71. It'd have about 700 meters per second. It feels maybe a little bit low. I would like to find a more efficient engine. So 20 kilo, or what's the ISP of this? Let's see here. 320 in the vacuum. What would the ant be? 315 in the vacuum. So the ant is actually slightly less efficient. We could use studs. That would burn through this really fast and it's less efficient even than that. These are the most efficient vacuum engines that we have, right? I mean, terriers, but terriers are gonna be huge. Pugs are slightly more efficient than terriers. But they have other problems. 700 meters per second would be enough, assuming that we land mostly on this fuel tank. Which does seem doable, given what we know about how this goes. And this is... Let's see here. This top, top one here on Kerbin would be 1.25 thrust to weight. So this is about the same thrust to weight ratio as what we had before. Okay. Do we have hemispherical fuel tanks that can cap this off and make that a little bit more rounded? Do we have, like, very small ones? Those are too big, obviously. Way too big. Uh, Oscar O's. That would be what we'd be looking for. There we go. That'll add additional fuel here and additional burn time. So over the moon, stage two is currently a one or nine nine fourteen delta v, and then this would return to orbit Kerbin, and we should have enough to do that with eleven seventy two, more than sufficient in theory. So in theory, it would be something kind of like this. It's definitely chewing gum and duct tape, no doubt about that, and I would like to strut in like that, just to make sure that that is held together a little bit better. We may also want to run some struts from here to here and from here to here, just to make sure that those are rigidly attached and potentially even struts from like here to here. And then those would all automatically detach when we stage this. So something along the lines of that. It is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to see if we want to do any changes to this moon sample return mission. And uh, maybe, maybe we want to do changes. But for now, it is time for that cut. So you can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, James, Shadow Wolf, and Lohan80, Rogue Corvid, Kentogan, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Anna the Elephant, Soccerman12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.